Hello and welcome back to Tinkerwinger 5. Today we're going to be building a brand new PC based on the Intel KB Lake framework, which means I actually had to upgrade a lot of my PC because actually a little bit has changed since I last built a PC. Now my current PC was an Intel 3770K with an Nvidia 680, so it was more than due for an update. So once we've got the new motherboard out of the box itself, now this is an MSI Tomahawk Z270, and what we're going to do is slide it in here. So don't drag it along the board, certainly, but you can slide it just into place where the screw holes actually start poking through the screw hole itself. So we've got the brass things underneath, remember, and they've got screw holes in them. Now we line these up with the actual screw holes themselves. So I'll just show you this right at the bottom here, so we can see we're slightly offset, and you just align it upwards like so. And then you want to put some screws in there. So you want to use the standard motherboard screws. Chances are you got lots with your case. Uh, I think you get some with your motherboard as well. So you'll be able to just use any of those. And you need to put, in this case, I had nine screws to put in, but this is an ATX form factor PC. If you guys use a smaller board, then you'll have less screws to put in, and there'll be a different alignment as well. So my alignment was actually quite good compared to my old one. And make sure you're using an anti-static thing. So I've got it on my leg at the moment, so I think it's just much easier than having it on my wrist. Take the plastic thing off the CPU cover, and just to make sure that there's no bent pins at this stage. And what I'm going to do is then install the power supply itself. Now, some people prefer to install the power supply first. I guess it doesn't really matter too much, but sometimes in like a smaller case, it's actually much better to put the power supply in first. But this is an E80X case, so I've got loads and loads of room. And because I've got loads and loads of room, I'm going to do the best cable management possible for this. So I'm going to slide everything through to the other side of the case. And this is very, very important for airflow itself. So installing the CPU itself, I'm installing an i7-7700. Now I could have gone for the K, but it was a little bit more expensive and I couldn't quite justify the expenditure. What you've got to do with the CPU is locate the triangle. So in this case there is a small brass triangle right there, you can see, and what we need to do is align that with the board itself. So I'm just trying to get the camera to focus on it. Right at the top here is a brass triangle and what we need to do is take this off and understand where it is on this board. In this case the CPU just goes in the right way up but with any other board it might differ. So just slide this back and at the bottom there we saw where the triangle was. So what you want to do is just slot this CPU in. You don't want to take it out, you don't want to slide it around, it will only go in one way these days. In the old days CPUs would go in multiple ways. Now you want to lock that under the screw, so at the moment I just can't lock it down because I haven't got the screw underneath it. But what you need to do is just slide it forwards and get it underneath the screw itself. So you can see in the bottom left of your screen there, now we get it underneath this screw and then we can lock the CPU into place. So you need a little bit of force to do it. All the way down, you're not going to break it, don't worry. And then let's slide it underneath there and make sure it's stable. So just run your finger over it and make sure there's like nothing moving around. Next thing we're going to do is install the RAM itself. I've gone for some Corsair Vengeance LPX. It is DDR4. That is one of the key differences from the last PC we built. So it's a little bit faster, not a whole lot faster, because I actually had quite fast DDR3 in my old PC. Now locate where the pin is. So we can see here this slots in this way, because there is a key in the middle of the RAM itself. Thankfully this board has clips either side, but you might encounter a board which only has a clip at the top or the bottom. But that's fine, you just use it as a lever. So you want to slide the RAM in one by one. Don't try and do multiple, just one by one, nice and careful. You do need to use a fair bit of force to get the RAM in, and you just measure them against each other. So run your fingers over the top. As long as it's not sticking out, then you've got it in. You can also look at the clips to make sure they are fully engaged and on the RAM itself. Now I've installed 32 gig of this RAM because I'm going to be doing video editing on it. Next is another new item. This is a solid state drive. However, it's based on PCI Express instead of being based on SATA. So it should be exceptionally fast. And I can tell you, spoiler alert, that it is. So I ordered it with the bracket, but actually my motherboard has space for it itself. So on any other computer, you might have to stick it into the PCI Express slot. So what I've done instead is installed it directly into the board. However, there's a problem. I've forgotten to install my CPU cooler first, and the back panel didn't actually cover where my CPU was. So what I've had to do is undo all the screws. I've still got the CPU in there, I've still got the RAM in there, and what I'm doing is now putting the back plate of my CPU cooler on. What we're using is the Corsair H100i, and it's version two of that. 
So you just put it on the back and you make sure all the holes come through. Normally with most cases you'll be actually be able to just put it on as is. However, in my case the hole wasn't quite in the right place for this board. Now the boards themselves move it around a little bit in case of cooling, but I guess this is fine too. So here is the actual cooler itself. So you want to stick the radiator to the top of the case itself. With it lying down like this, it's actually quite tricky. Just make sure you've got a lot of space behind it, like I don't at the moment because I've got that box in the way. But what you've got to do is just get it in place and put the screws in nice and tight. So you don't want this thing shaking around because that's going to create a big noise and it might even damage the cooler. Most of you will have noticed that I've already taken off the stock fans because I don't plan on using them. What I'm using instead is these Corsair AF120s. Now these are 120mm fans, but they're a little bit more and they are static pressure fans. So they're not magnetic bearing, but they are static pressure. So they're going to cause a little bit more airflow than the stock fans installed. So hopefully they'll be able to run at lower RPMs. To attach them, simply use the screws that come with the cooler itself. Now these are quite long and they have a washer on the end for stability so they make sure they're not shaking around inside the fan and you want to just screw them all in equally at the same place I did a little bit of going around but not much I just wanted to make sure I wasn't going to damage the cooler itself and you want to do exactly the same for fan number two afterwards now fan number two is a little bit easier you can actually brace it against fan number one and just go all the way around bit by bit being very very careful on not over tightening them because again you don't want to damage the cooler itself Next we're installing the pump. Now what we've put on is the big screws earlier and we put the back plate on. Now apologies my hand is kind of in the way here, but what we're doing is we're just lining it up with the screws that we put in the holes earlier. So we can see we have screws in front of the pump. Now we have these big nuts that we're going to put on the top. So we have put them on one by one and we're not putting these on tight. Do not put them on tight yet because you want to tighten them equally around the CPU because this helps spread the heat paste over it. Now you can go across, you can go round, it doesn't really matter too much. What they recommend is you go across from each screw but I went round for no particular reason. But as long as you're doing it equally like this and they all get to the same tightness around the same time, you're going to be okay. Now it has a USB on the bottom as well for changing the colour and getting some more detailed statistics through to your PC itself. Connecting up the CPU fan, so it goes to the normal fan header, it's going to have the control but it's not going to have the voltage running to it. On the back here I'm installing a magnetic levitation fan. This is the Corsair magnetic levitation fan and it's a 140mm instead of a 120 my case supports it. Hopefully again lower RPMs, uh, I can tell you for a fact that wasn't the case, this thing actually butts out a load of air and it runs pretty fast so it's a little bit noisier than I want it to. So I might put a resistor in just to slow it down. Next bit is we've got to confirm with the motherboard manual itself. This is the only fiddly bit really. What we're confirming is how the motherboard wants to connect to the case itself. Now from the case we have the hard drive LED, the power LED, the reset switch and the power switch. So we're going to zoom right in here to JFP1. Now I've consulted the manual and I know which way these go round. Now the white lead is typically the negative and the red lead is the positive. What you want to do is just find the common lead, that is you're going to be your negative. So between all of these what you need to do is look at what you've got. So in this case we've got blue and white, we had red and white and white and orange. So white is my negative and my coloured wire is my positive. Which is fairly standard and what I did then is just wrap them all up like this just to make sure they're not going to go anywhere. Next, install your storage. So we've got a Samsung 850 Evo going at the top here. This is going to be my editing drive. Next thing to go in is going to be a 3 terabyte drive. This is where I keep most of my data, anything that I don't want on the SSDs itself. Next is a media drive. So this is on a green hard drive, it's not always accessed. So it's saving a little bit of power, but that's merely just because I had a 2 terabyte green drive lying around that I'm using for. Lock it down inside the case. It's fairly useful this case, but you can just slot hard drives in as normal. And then what we're going to do finally is install this other 3 terabyte drive for which used to be my Unix drive, but now I just keep YouTube stuff on it. What I thought about doing is installing another SSD here. I then took it out later in this build, so this SSD didn't actually get installed. Uh, I immediately took out the case itself because I didn't have enough SATA ports. This board only has six. Next I'm going to connect the power cable, this big long 24 pin power cable just because it was kind of in the way of my cabling that I wanted to do next because what I want to do is cable up the drives itself. 
So I've got the SSD installed, but I need everything else connected as well to the SATA ports. And next to this actually is the USB 3, which we'll show you connecting in a minute. So you want to press down fairly hard, but not too hard. Just make sure the clip aligns and make sure that you're not forcing it in somewhere it shouldn't go. So my two optical drives, I have a Blu-ray reader which goes at the top of my PC like this, uh, some tape which goes over the old power LED, I've replaced this since to make it a bit less bright, and a Blu-ray writer which goes here. And I've got a little clicky thing on the side which I'm pressing right now, which locks it into place, ready for me to put some more screws on it. So there's, although it locks it fairly simple into place, it does rattle around a bit when the drive's at high speed. Next, I'm threading some SATA data cables through from the back here all the way to the front. So I'm connecting them from the bottom up with the right angle connector, which causes me to come a little bit unstuck later on, unfortunately, with the SSD. So we're connecting these up and we're just slotting it through here, keeping the cables nice and tidy and out of the airflow. We cut this here and what we're going to do is put a fan in front of them as well. So we install all three and then we discover that we actually can't connect the SSD up because this right angle connector is in the way. So what we're going to do is install, unfortunately, a horrible yellow cable. I hate this yellow cable, but it's the only one I've got that's flat on both ends. The rest of my SATA cables are right angles. With normal drive bays, you might not find this a problem, but in this case, I had a big problem with this. We then connect up the optical drives as well, and we're going to connect them off with one and two right angle connectors. Now I kept these black, I took the white out of them because I didn't want to bring attention to them. Again, taking them through the back and bringing them to the bottom here. So we can see the horrible yellow cable which completely ruins the design, but it needs must. Nothing else I can do at the moment. Thankfully it's not a really old SATA cable and it actually has the locking mechanism, so I'm not going to suffer any issues with that. Next is the graphics card. Now this is an Nvidia 1070 graphics card. We saw the picture right at the start, and it's a little bit tricky to get in. You just want to make sure there's nothing in the way. So we've got a little bit of power cable sticking out there from the assembly I have uh, on the front of the PC, so the TV card, etc. And you just want to slide it in, and then discover that this case, you know, it's tried to be clever, and it's tried to be helpful by putting these screw mounts in, but because this actually has such a large cooler, these mounts are actually fouling on the cooler itself. So I had to use normal screws. Next, because I've got a modular power supply, is I'm installing power cables. So we've got a main one which goes along to the rest of them and a single one which is going to go to the bottom, like so. So we've got all drives now powered up and we just plug them into the side. Now my power supply is semi-modular, it's a Be Quiet model and it's 850 watts, but it has platinum power efficiency. So I've kept the main 24 pin as connected, so it's semi-modular, not completely fully modular, as it's always got to be connected, like there's no scenario where I'm not going to be using that because that's how you turn the PSU on. So I thought semi-modular was the best way to go. The rest of these, I can only install what I need, so I've got my power, power cables for my SATA connections and I've got my graphics card connection. Now I needed a 4 pin, but a single 4 pin, whereas my previous 680 needed two 3 pins. Thread this through from the back and we're just going to stick it in the side of the card here. Now I thought about getting a spacer for it or something that's going to like hold the graphics card up but actually when it's vertical it's holding itself up pretty well from the port. The port has a metal shielding around it which is supposedly for heat but I don't buy that. So it's actually just making the port a little bit stronger so it's not getting a GPU sag but you could of course put something in that's going to connect it to the other side of the case. The power cable is a little bit tricky because you've got to get this little thing on the side here for the four pins and you just when you get it into place and just slide it in. This might make the GPU sag if you bring it from below, but just keep an eye out for it when you're building your PC yourselves. So this is it. This is pretty much everything. What I've also installed is a sound card at the bottom there. Didn't show you that, but it's exactly the same as the graphics card. You just slot it down into it. Make sure the cables are mostly out of the way. I've since moved the sound card a little bit further down and moved that ribbon cable in to make the airflow slightly better. In reality, it's not making much difference because it's only one cable. And then at the bottom there's a bit of a cable mess. There's this NZXT USB hub internal, which is fantastic. And this is the first time I turned it on. It's alive! And it's fantastic. I've rarely had a PC turn on first time. Usually it's something simple like I forgot to plug in the power to the back of it or flop switch switch. But it's working. All the fans are spinning, all the lights are on. CPU or memory changed. It wants to go through because it's the first time I'm actually using it. It was maybe tested in the factory, and it wasn't tested with a 770. 
So what you need to do now is go through the EFI and make sure everything is there and everything's at the correct speed. So I can already tell that my RAM is running way too slow. It should not be running at 2133, it should be running at 2800. So what I can do is go into the XMP profiles, but to do that I've got to go into the advanced settings. It won't let me do it from this horrible basic menu unfortunately. So I went into advanced and I go under settings or the overclock profile and I have access to the XMP options. And this lets me reset the RAM. What's curious is my M2 SSD, my PCI Express SSD, doesn't actually show up in this EFI. I don't know why, maybe it's some sort of glitch, but what I was able to install Windows to it and it's all fully functional. So I don't know what's quite going on, it just doesn't display it for some reason. But you can go through all of these settings, so I've just disabled the full screen logo as I would like quite a post screen. It doesn't stay around for long and there's no option to pause the post screen unless I actually press pause on the keyboard and I can select my boot options as well. So my first boot option is CD, DVD, then to hard drive, USB, but most of the time you guys want to set this to hard drive. It depends on what I'm doing. I might reinstall a few things here and there, and that usually means I need to be booting to something else that's not quite my hard drive first. Not that it takes any time at all with this board, it is lightning fast, trust me. So we've got the overclock options, where we can have the explore mode turned on, so you can look at the cores themselves and see what the clock rates are. So it's 3900 for the actual boost. And then we can have a look around at the XMP profiles. And we have two available to us. So we want to put XMP profile 2 on because that's the faster one. So at this point all we need to do is quit and it will reboot the PC. Now I know what you're all asking, do you have to reinstall Windows? I didn't even risk it, I just went straight away and reinstalled Windows 10. I now have all my CPUs running once Windows is installed and I can see them by core view, and I can see the speed. So they're clocking up and down based on the boost ratios, and I went in to have a look at everything else that was going on, just to make sure that it was actually installed on that M2 SSD. So here is my entire kit list from my build. We have the Cooler Master HAF 932 Advanced case, Nicepeak E80X case, an MSI Tomahawk Z270, an Intel i7-7700, an MSI Armour GTX 1070, I know it's an AMD board but I've installed an M NVIDIA GPU, but that's fine. 32 gig Corsair Vengeance DDR4, Corsair H100i V2, Kingston HyperX 240 gig PCIe Express SSD, 3TB Toshiba, a 2TB Hitachi, another 3TB Western Digital, and a 500 gig Samsung 850 EVO all on my Be Quiet 850W Platinum power supply. So what will I be using this PC for? I'll be using this PC for a range of things. I'll be using it for gaming, I'll be using it for streaming, I'll be using it for video editing, and by upping the power this high, I'm actually able to do what I want to do with my PC all the time, and completely unhindered, because it's just so fast. And being able to just walk into my room and turn on the PC has just been amazing. So I've been using it for a couple of weeks now and it runs just absolutely amazingly. So quick. I wish I could pause the post screen a little bit more. That's my, my only criticism of the board so far. But I'll get over it. I can just keep pressing pause break every time it turns on. Thanks for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video.